Good morning everyone and welcome to a new special episode because today we have the 2023-2024 going forward question of the year, Canon or Sony? It's not a prank, I'm not joking, I think we need to have the discussions, we're gonna be sitting together, we're gonna be talking about it, I want your comments right there below, tell me your experience, which one you shoot with, Do would you switch, would you swap, which one would you recommend to someone who doesn't have the camera? I want to talk about a few points with you, design, ergonomics, performance, autofocus, colors, menus, and quirks in and out, and things I find weird that maybe should never go in a camera that is Sony or Canon. And most importantly, remember that we're gonna be talking about a lot of things here, but they're not as important as one thing, and one thing only that I will share with you towards the end. It's almost like you speak a lot, but you don't speak a lot because not everything matters. So. You'll see exactly what I mean in just a second, but we're gonna break it down very easily for you to be able to make a decision if you're in that process right now because I get a lot of messages from you asking me the exact question. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, welcome to a special episode. My name is Pierre T. Lambert. I'm a travel adventure photographer and the creator of the 30 Day Adventure to Great Photos, step-by-step -step method for taking your photography to the next level whether you're using Canon, Sony, a banana, or a phone. Because the most important thing is what happens in your brain. And to train that, I've developed that method that has worked for thousands of students around the world. And from that, I've gathered something very important. The brand you're using is not that important. I mean, I knew it, but it is confirmed. But it is important to a certain extent for how you will use the camera and that We'll wrap up at the end and I will share exactly what I mean by that. But remember, print your photos, bring them out in the real world. And for that, we've got an awesome partner today, White Wall, with a special discount for you in the description. So check out the link in the description to print your work, to bring it to life and to experience it differently. Bring your photos in the real world is the most important. You can experience them differently. You can look at them differently. You can feel them. You can see things you wouldn't be able to see from a screen and it connects you back with the essence of creation with photography. You're creating an image, you're capturing light, printing that moment forever in time. Bring it to life, bring it in the real world. White Wall is a high quality print light that I've been using for years for both my professional clients and for my personal work. And I've always been thrilled with it. Even one time I received it, it was shipped and damaged and they actually replaced the prints for me. So that's really awesome customer service. I've been super happy with them. And the most important thing I will say is that if you want to print for big on the wall and you want some depth in your image, try an acrylic print. It's more expensive, but it looks really cool. And if you want something more gallery style, go for a framed fine art paper print. You'll see it looks great. Canvases are also very interesting. So check out the link in the description to get a discount for printing your next images. And remember, whichever brand you're using, it doesn't really matter because once it's printed and you're looking at it, you can't tell what shot what. Now let's get started right away with the most important, maybe because this is the thing we're touching all the time when we're taking photos, ergonomics, design. How does it feel to have a Canon versus a Sony? Well, Joey, whose studio this is, look at the awesome work he did right here. He's gonna have a whole studio tour on his channel. You can watch it on his channel, basically subscribe if it's not out, it's gonna be out soon. But the most important thing he said is like, having a Canon body in hand is almost like getting something that is bulky, bigger, but feels light in a way. It's almost having like a, a bigger block of foam. But having a Sony camera in hand is like having something that is small, but very dense. And I totally get what he means because the camera bodies of Sony's feel a little bit smaller in hand. It feels less bulky. It feels like compact and dense, almost like if you had a little block and one was like really dense wood and the other one was cork. So you would definitely feel the difference. And that's kind of how it feels in my opinion. I agree totally with Joey on that point. So who should I give a point to for the feel of the camera body? I will give it, uh, it's gonna be up to you to decide because there is something else to know, is that the Sony bodies are very sharp edges, I would call them. They're like very square-ish, although rounded, but it feels like more like a square in your hand versus the Canon one feels very rounded. It's almost like one square has like sharp edges and the other one has like very rounded edges. And I find the feel of a Canon very nice in my hand. I've seen comments from you guys where you said that you didn't like that feel at all. You preferred something that is more squarey, more edgy, and that has that, that grip and density. So it's gonna be up to you to decide. 
Personally, I love my Sony for the compactness, but I love the Canon for the feel of the camera in hand. So it's kind of a point for each in that category. Now, a camera does not come without a lens. In terms of lenses, I will straight away give the point to Sony and let me tell you why. Because they try to make it smaller and more compact over time, which I appreciate. Canon, on the other hand, even though they went in the RF lenses and the hybrid world, I feel that the lenses did not get smaller. They actually sometimes came out bigger, or at least it feels like they are bigger. For me, in 2023, that is kind of a bummer. I kind of want to make everything smaller and more compact and lighter so that it feels nicer to bring your gear, you know? I will preface that by saying, if you don't know, in 2013, 2014, I was shooting Canon, a Canon 5D Mark II, then I evolved into Nikon, then I evolved into Sony. Every time I changed my gear, and the comparison between 2016 Canon versus 2016 Sony is drastic. In 2018, the difference started to be noticeable still, but clearly in 2023, in a lot of aspects we're gonna talk about, the difference is less drastic and you will see it's very interesting. So I kind of want you to think in 2023 and not in 2018 or 2020 when we still had like some weird stuff with hybrid cameras. Nowadays, I find that the comparison is a lot more fair than back then. Now, super important, the ecosystem for the performance, the lenses. First of all, let's just throw it out there. Lenses on Sony and Canon are amazing. As I mentioned, the performance of lenses is great, fast, responsive. It's everything you want it to be, honestly, when you're spending a lot of money on those lenses. But like I said, there is a big difference. Actually, I didn't say it. There is a huge difference between the two is that Canon is locked in with Canon lenses, RF system for hybrid RF Canon lenses. You can only use that. You can use a RF adapter and use a DSLR len Canon lenses on it, which opens you to Sigma and Tamron, but Sigma and Tamrons are not a lot or don't have, the, like their port, the Canon port is not open for anyone else to create lenses but Canon, which is a huge drag for anyone who's on the budget because Sigma has great lenses. Tamron has great lenses that are way cheaper and that allows you to get good results without breaking the bank, then you can buy a ticket, fly somewhere, go see a new park, spend some time in the nature, you know, like you can go on adventures with that budget versus spending it in the lenses. But Sony has it open. You can go for Sigma, Tamron, any other brands you can imagine. And that is excellent. That is great. That is beautiful. Again, it creates an open market and it makes things a lot more accessible for a lot of people. And that's one of the things I tell people a lot is that if you already have all Canon RF lenses, yeah, stay with Canon. If you have all DSLR Canon lenses, you may need the adapter. I don't know about the performance. You'll have to check. You'll have to try it. But it could not be the same. But most importantly, you won't be able to tap into your Sigma or Tamron for RF because there is none right now. And that will be a big drag if you're tight on budget. But if you're planning to stay just with Canon lenses, then it doesn't matter. So let's continue with our design. And so here is the best example for 2023. Buttons ergonomics on the camera, like usability of the camera. The Canon R6 Mark II that I tested recently left me with nothing to say about the ergonomics. All the buttons felt really good. They were easy to access and I had enough of them to be able to dial in anything I wanted very quickly, which back in the days in 2013, 14, I felt like Canons had a little less buttons than for example, a Nikon and I appreciated having a little more buttons. So over time, things changed. I feel like they're kind of equal nowadays when it comes to Sony or Canon. None. I found that I have enough buttons and I have the ergonomics that feel good in my hands when it comes to dialing settings in the camera. So that's really a good point for everyone right here. Now, when it comes to connectivity, oof, Canon does a great job. You have all the cables you need. Sony too, you, need the you have the cables you need. Now, Sony has a tendency to have like bigger HDMI ports on like the pro level cameras. Maybe then Canon that will rely on the micro HDMI's on some models. But one thing I noticed, especially since 2020, I would say the USB-C ports on the Canon would not work with all the cables. And someone please correct me if I am wrong or give me like the tech explanation down there. But 
some cables would not work, some chargers wouldn't like charge fully. At the time, back in the days, you couldn't shoot with a camera and charge it at the same time, which you could with the Sony. But nowadays, you can with both, which is great. Point for both. But I still find some weirdness with the cables if I don't have the right power source or the right USB-C cable to charge the Canon, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer, if I'm honest. The Sony has been working flawlessly whichever cable I threw in there. So yeah. I don't know if someone can explain that or has that experience, let me know in the comments right below because I'm always surprised when that happens and I wonder if it's not just a me thing with a failed cable. That is also possible. Batteries, oof. Let's talk about batteries for a second. Sony has been keeping the same batteries since 2017, maybe 2016. And that is a blessing because all the cameras that you have right now that are coming out and that came out are using those batteries. The battery is called NPFZ100, which is awesome because you don't need other batteries. You don't need to buy more batteries. And in 2023, guys, we talk about climate change, we talk about pollution, being more mindful of our environment and coming a little more in accord with the nature that we have and that we are and the earth. And I feel like Canon is like, yeah, whatever, we're just gonna change batteries and we're gonna put smaller batteries in this camera and bigger batteries in that one, which creates like waste in my opinion. And also I found that Canon's packaging was actually pretty wasteful compared to the one Sony had right now. So I'll give the point for the batteries for Sony like 100% because who needs to buy more batteries, right? Remember every time that company pushes a button and they decide to say, yes, we're gonna change a battery design, they're literally throwing thousands and hundreds and millions of batteries in the trash of people's homes. And it's not that easy to dispose of, at least in the US. I remember I had to drive around places to find a place to dispose of batteries. And um, yeah, actually Xfinity ended up being the place that, that took all my electronic trash, which was surprising. Imagine if we had even batteries that would go through different brands. How cool would that be? And how much waste would we save, right? Uh, that's just my little rant. Let's move on and let's go to plastic scratches. What does that mean? Okay, Canon bodies feel more lighter, like I said, but I feel like they're more made of like full plastic. And the Sony, they talk a lot about the magnesium alloy body, I think, that is then painted. So maybe not true for all the cameras, but generally speaking, from my experience, from my friends' cameras and having my own cameras, I have found that the, my Sony cameras would look a little older faster than the Canon one that looked older later in life and scratch a little less. So just cosmetic, it's nothing scientific. It's just my feeling with it. So point for Canon on that for the durability, uh, I would say of the look and scratch resistance. Now let's talk about rain and durability against elements. Oof. Okay, my Sony, I've put it through so much. Rain, seawater, snow, and I always rinse it with fresh water. If it's seawater, by the way, I highly recommend it. And I wipe it as soon as I can. But you've seen me shoot with the R5 for hours in the rain in Japan, and it performed the whole time. Now you wanna make sure that your lenses are also built in to have some resistance, right? And whether it's Canon or Sony, my Canon friends all have good experiences. Yes, things will fail when they're dipped in the water fully but you can get along and shoot in the snow or in the rain and like cover your bases and just be a little mindful. Don't push it too far, but it is pretty good nowadays. I will say, I think it resists really well to elements for both brands. Now I have more experience with Sony than with Canon, but all the Canon people out there, please let us know in the comments if you have bad experiences or if you shot in a little bit of rain. I'm not talking about the tropical rain for an hour, please, but uh, I'm talking about like decent amount of rain, a few drops here and there, maybe the outside is wet, you wipe it off. How was your experience? To me, and from my feedback I got, it seems to be fairly the same. So weather ceiling, equal point for Sony and Canon, I would say. Now let's talk about the screens because the point goes directly to Canon screens, back screen. I find that it looks better, it looks a little crispier on Canon cameras than on Sony cameras. And that's a generalization, but from my experience, it looked a little crispier. The images looked a little better at the back of the camera on the Canon versus 
the Sony, so that's something you might want to consider. The viewfinders both feel great nowadays. There's no blackout when you take burst. It looks awesome. It's super responsive. Back in 2016, 18, like, oh my God, it was like lag. It wasn't always the best. Maybe 2018 started to fix all those issues, but I remember back in the days, it wasn't perfect. Nowadays with hybrid cameras, boom, everything's great, but the screen looked a little bit better on the Canon than on the Sony, in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments right now, because it's pretty important. So that's that's it for the ergonomics. I'm not gonna give a point in general. You know what? It depends on your hand and how you want to feel about it because that will be the biggest difference. So let's get to the performance with that being said because you still need to talk about it, right? Auto focus, big topic because back in 2016, there was big differences between brands, between Canon, Sony, Nikon, especially when you switch from photo to video, suddenly things went off the window. And which is one of the reasons I, I moved to Sony back then in 2017, 2018, because Sony was more consistent between the autofocus of photo and video. And I love that. And ever since, Sony has always been impressive for autofocus. It locks on the subject, it doesn't lose it. It is intuitive, it is responsive, it is fast. And now they have the AI autofocus that also exist on Canon, we'll get there in a second, where you can select if you want to detect birds, planes, humans, animals, insects, a kind of bunch of weird things also. And I will tell you that it works flawlessly. You know, it's great, but I'm still a big sucker for single point focus mode. You can watch the whole video where I talk about all my settings, but single focus mode, single point focus allows me to always know exactly what I'm going to shoot. And then I'm going to press straight on the lens and have a direct button that will focus on the eyes. That is kind of my override, which is great, you know, so I can control where my focus point is at all times. Now, Canon historically had great autofocus. Remember back in the dual AF pixel marketing term for their autofocus? Everyone was like, oh, this is dual AF, so it must be great. Yeah, it was always great. Video and photo were doing great job at uh, tracking your subject, not losing it too much because it used to happen. But nowadays in 2023, pff, oh my God, it's really hard to go wrong with autofocus. Honestly, the AI autofocus on the Canon detects all the scenes the same as the Sony, but it also has, point for Canon here, auto feature, which will detect automatically between humans or cars or whatever you want, whatever is available. And I found that really refreshing because Sony would not let me do that. It forces you to choose what kind of object you want to detect. But Canon is like, hey, let me, let me, let me do it. I'll figure out which one I want to focus on. When there's several subjects, types of subject in the scene, maybe you want to be careful, but most of the time the priority was given to humans, which is great. And Canon has tons and tons of tweaks possible for autofocuses, especially in the pro camera models. There is maybe too many tweaks possible, which is overwhelming in my opinion. And for that, I prefer Sony that has a little bit less tweaks, but it works straight out of the gate, it works flawlessly and I don't have to think about tweaking anything on the pro level models. Now, it will depend on your usage and how much tweaking you want to be doing. So in terms of out of focus, I would say performance wise, it's kind of even nowadays. So point in each camp, but there is a thing where the visualization of the autofocus zones and how it's autofocusing, I will give it to Sony rather than Canon. Although it's cool in Canon because it always looks like it's picking up things and doing things. That's super cool. But the problem is that it's actually hard to know if you're focusing at the front of the car, the back of the car. I talked about it in my Canon R6 Mark II review. Check that out. Because if you have a box around the car like that shows you the hit box, you know, the focus box, if you're shooting at one eight, you don't know exactly how deep your focus will be. So it's something that I found a little bit confusing on the Canon side, if I'm very honest. So maybe I would get more consistent results uh, with my Sony than the Canon, but it could also simply be my experience and the fact that I'm using more the Sony than the Canon. So that's for the autofocus. Let's talk about the colors. Colors have had so much ink spilling all over the internet for years, especially between Canon and Sony. Canon colors are so good. People used to say, I can't go to Sony. The colors are not good enough. Canon's colors are better. Look at this. Look at the back of my camera. It looks so much better. Ooh, the colors are good. There's magenta and green and Sony. I don't like it. Yeah, there, there was all that discussion, that evolution. That is absolutely true. There was a big difference. But nowadays in 2023 and going forward, I found that the difference is much, 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 much closer. We are having something that is more even. 
Uh, Canon used to be a little warmer. I think it's still warmer, but maybe a tiny bit less warm. And Sony has done such an amazing work at improving the color science and slowly both of them are getting something very natural, very realistic. And I absolutely love both color sciences from both cameras. So I don't have a preference on that. And I will add that the white balance, maybe the Sony has or had a tendency to go a little more towards the cooler side and the Canon towards the warmer side. But again, this is really tapering I find, over time and it's kind of the same nowadays. So let me know your experience, but for me, point in both directions. It may be a, a, just a question of tweaks and feels. Maybe Canon is more contrasted, has more punchier colors in camera with the JPEG than the Sony that goes towards more natural colors. I don't know, it's hard to say because I'm also shooting everything in RAW. I'm editing them with my Lightroom presets that I've created that I use both for Canon and Sony, which gives me a consistent look and gives me looks and creative looks that I absolutely love. By the way, they're in the description. If you want to grab them, you can at any time. There might be even a free one in one of the videos. You can check that out. Now the ultimate question, how to choose? How to choose? Why am I yelling? I don't know. But I wanted to make a point, how to choose. You don't have to choose necessarily. If you are already within a system, stay within that system because each brand gets better over time. This one's gonna get better and that's in that realm for this month and this one the next month. So they're all always doing catch up and they're getting better, both of them. So stay with what you have. If you don't have anything, go in a shop right now and take them in your hand and go for the brand that feels the best if you're not on a budget and you can afford Canon lenses. You can't afford Canon glass, high quality glass, the L series, etc. Probably go for another brand because uh, that opens up more possibilities like Sony. Maybe go for Sony so you get Sigma and Tamron and you can get great glass at a good price. Again, it goes back to the most important thing, what happens in your brain, your creative vision, how do you prepare to create an image, what do you want to create, what message do you want to push forward, and then you find a tool that will get the job done. So please get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new, focus on that and maybe print your photo also and you'll realize really how little it matters which brand took the photo. Because nowadays you can do everything with almost all the brands. It's that boring in the technological world. I'll see you in the next one. Have a beautiful day.